how are you doing hello how are you doing it's a pleasure being here today with you and uh, today i want to dissect another very important topic uh, which speaks about all about the water baptism you see there have been a lot of confusion is it uh, really uh, water baptism is it really essential for salvation is it necessary that somebody is baptized some people say yes you need to be baptized others say no it's not that necessary you can just go to heaven without baptism and then it's really confusing people and why is there a baptism in the Bible and uh, we, don't, we, we cannot be able to be baptized? So I want us today to be able to understand, is water baptism really essential for salvation? And uh, the Bible tells us very well that uh, all our doctrine comes from the Bible, nowhere else. So everything that we believe should come from the Bible. So uh, we should not be listening to some people telling us this or that and uh, not going to what the Bible says. So we have to be very careful about this and we have to... Today I just want to make sure that I'm speaking exactly what God says in the Bible because the Bible is our guide. The Bible is everything. And uh, in 2 Timothy 2.15, that is going to be our opening uh, point. 2 Timothy 2.15 the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So the Bible tells us, please rightly divide the word of truth. You have to divide and be able to understand, am I in this side or am I here or am I here or am I here? Where exactly am I in the Bible? And uh, having known where you are, let me just uh, draw this. When you know where you are, it means already you understand what's happening and what God has commanded within that time, all right? So we have, uh, this is the, uh, the time of the law, the time of the law, all right? And then we have uh, another time here. Uh, let me do like this, the time of the law. And then we have a certain ministry here. This is the law. All right, law. And then we have uh, some guy who showed up here who is called John. All right. So we have the John's ministry. Then after that, we also have uh, Jesus showing up around here. So we have Jesus' ministry. All right. Uh, we have Jesus' ministry. All right. Then after that, uh, ministry. Then after that, we also have the church age. The church age is all this time when uh, we have been all through in the church. This is the time of the Gentiles, the church age. And then after that, we have the rapture. The rapture happens around that time. Uh, this is the rapture. And then, during this time, we have the tribulation, all right? And then after tribulation, we see the Armageddon, the battle of the Armageddon. All right? And then we have the millennial kingdom. That is the millennial kingdom. That is a thousand years. All right? So now, when, when I divide this so well, you can be able to understand exactly where we are because as we speak, we are here. We are right here. This is us here. All right. We are here. So we are no longer in the time of the law. We are no longer in the time of, uh, of uh, the time of this is Adam, you know, as, as we go. I just want to start from here. So this is the time of Moses. Let me just write here. Moses, the law, and all that, and then the other guys. And then we have here Jesus' ministry And uh, as, as we go ahead. So now, first we have understood where exactly we are. So that's really, really important. That is what we call rightfully dividing the word of truth to understand where exactly are we. So right now, as you speak, we have over 3,000 denominations today. Many, many denominations. Why, why do we have all these denominations? Is, is God divided? 
Uh, is uh, God the author of confusion? No, God is not the author of confusion. God is not divided. And all these denominations, they all differ in something. This person differs with this and this one differs with this because all of them, they have different things. Why? Because many people follow the commands of men and not the Bible. If we all followed what the Bible says, then we will not really have all these many divisions. All right? So let's see what the Bible says. Let's see what the Bible says. In uh, Hebrews 6, 1 to 3, the Bible tells us something here. Hebrews 6, 1 to 3, the Bible says, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Now, listen one thing here. Somebody is telling us, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. That seems a bit absurd. Why would you leave the doctrine of Christ? Is there something that we are not getting here? Let's keep on checking. Verse 2. Of the doctrine of baptisms. All right. Okay. Of the doctrines of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. This we will do if God permits. So why are we being told to leave these doctrines? Of baptisms and this and this and this. And uh, we are really wondering how how could could we have such kind of a uh, such kind of a message of living the doctrines, the doctrines of Christ. Why why would it be necessary to do that? Because there's something which transitioned, and uh, we are going to check it here very, very soon and understand what really happened. Why is it that the Bible is telling us, leave these doctrines here, which used to be in this time of Jesus' ministry. Start doing another thing, the doctrines of baptism. In short, the Bible is saying, let's forget the old teachings, the old ways of doing things here, which are not in our dispensation and follow the dispensation of grace. This time was a different dispensation. Different dispensation, different... Even after the time of grace, the grace will end at the rapture. So after the time of the grace, we'll have another dispensation. The time of the tribulation, all right? And then after that, we'll have the millennial kingdom. So you see, people are not saved the same way all across in the Bible. No. People are not saved the same way all across in the Bible, all right? So we can understand that God dealt with people in different ways across the Bible. So now, there's one major book which really confuses people here, which is called the book of Acts, all right? Acts, it's a, it's a, it's a, it is a transitional book, all right? Many people will not really understand what I mean by that, and others will also deny. But what I like to tell you is that Acts shows us moving from one way of doing things to another way of doing things. And uh, Acts, in the book of Acts, we see the Bible is transitioning from Peter, from Peter to Paul, all right? From Peter to Paul. We are also seeing another transition from the Jews to Gentiles. We are also seeing another transition from signs to faith. All right? From signs to faith. And then we also see another transition, which I don't want to spill the beans, but I'm going to explain to you later on what else transitions here in the book of uh, Acts. All right, so we see all across in the Bible, in the Old Testament, we see God always demanded people to be washed. There are so many times that God demanded people to be washed. That is, uh, let's say, for example, the time of the Israelites, when they were to meet God at Mount Sinai, Moses was told, hey, tell these people to go and clean up themselves, to wash up themselves because I'm coming to meet them. They want to meet me? Yeah, let them be washed. So... That is one of the time we see also Jesus telling the leper, go and wash yourself seven times. They had to be washing. There is also John the Baptist. He was also washing people in water. And we see so many times that there was needed, people who were needed to be washed in one way or another. So cleansing had to be there by water over the years, over the time 
this time frame. And then now, I want us to check in different ministries and what people were speaking about so that we can be able to understand this whole thing of baptism. What exactly was John speaking about? Why did John baptize? That's a main question that we should ask ourselves. Why did John baptize? Let's go to Matthew 3. Matthew 3 uh, from verse 1 to 6. All right. Let's see what the Bible says. In those days came, uh, came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of off by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. All right? And then we see, uh, And the same John had raised, uh, had his raiment of camel's hair, and lathan gendel about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem, and all Judea, and all the region around about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. So we see the main thing why uh, John was baptizing is for, conf uh, for the cleansing of sins, all right? It was cleansing of sins through water, all right? So when these people get inside water, they were cleansed of their sins and they were preparing for the Messiah, all right? They were preparing for Messiah. So in short, when you get cleansed in water, you get inside water, you are preparing for Messiah and also your sins are also cleansed. That's, that's some of the things that we see here with, uh, with the Peter. All right. We can even see Matthew 3.10. Matthew 3.10 to around 12. All right. Listen to what Peter is, uh, Nani, uh, John is saying. Yeah? 3.10. He's saying, and now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast it on the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. So he's saying, I baptize you with water. All right. I baptize you with water. So he's explaining that. I indeed baptize you with water. Unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So he's saying, personally, I baptize you with water. But there is one who is coming after me who is going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So see, there are two kinds of holy, uh, baptisms here which are going to be, people are going to be baptized when the next person who John is saying is going to come. And one is saying, baptized by Holy Ghost and with fire. You see, there are so many people who always say, ah, you see, I, I, it's all fire, fire, and I think we'll be baptized by fire. Don't you really understand the baptism of fire does not really mean it's a good baptism. This is, let's see, there's a semicolon, there's a full colon there. Just before we go to verse 12. Let's see verse 12. The Bible says, talks about now this fire. Because when you see a, a, a colon there, it means there's an explanation. In the next verse. Whose fun is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, and gather his wheat into the garner. He will burn up the chaff with the unquenchable fire. So where do we find the unquenchable fire? That is in hell. We already told that we, God sees us like trees walking. So he will cut the tree. And then when he cuts the tree down there, he will be able to burn with unquenchable fire, the chaff, all right? So there are two kinds of baptisms. So one will be a good baptism, and the other one will be a bad baptism, all right? So literally he's saying that... Um, there are going to be two baptisms. So one is by the Holy Ghost. All right. And then another one is going to be by fire. So definitely here we know this is in hell because we have unquenchable fire. And then this one we know is in heaven. All right. Heaven or these are the saved people and these are the sinners. So you're seeing, you're seeing the difference? So let's continue. We are currently trying to see what 
what John was preaching, all his ministry, what was it about? Let's see also Mark 1, 8, what he says. John says, I indeed baptize you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. So he confirms again, I baptize you with water, but the one who is coming after me will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Okay. So why did John baptize? Why, why, why was the reason? What was the main reason? Why was John baptizing? And this one we can see in uh, John 1, 29 to 31. Let's see there. John 1, 29 to 31. The Bible says, The next day John sees Jesus coming unto him, and he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the, son of, uh, the sin of the world. This is he whom I said, after me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore, I come baptizing with water. So, here John says, hey, listen, this is he who I was saying. This is he who, I, and that's why I baptized him, so that I could make him, make him manifest unto Israel. That's why I baptized him with water. So we see already, he wanted to manifest Jesus to Israel as who? As the Messiah. To show, this is your Messiah, the one who has always been prophesied, this is your Messiah. So that's why he baptized with water. And that, we see the whole story of John. And we understand his ministry. Now, let's come to Jesus' ministry. Let's see what exactly did Jesus talk about? And what was Jesus talking about? And did he really say that baptism, baptism, that you guys, you have to be baptized by water? Let's see. So, in most of the preachings of Jesus, we really see so many times when Jesus is talking about, I did not come but to the Lordship of Israel. Uh, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I mean, uh, already that one was spoken by John, sorry. And then Jesus says all the time that, uh, the Bible says, and he preached the message of the kingdom. The message of the kingdom. So which kingdom was Jesus speaking about here? It, he was speaking about the kingdom of heaven here. He was not speaking about our time here. Jesus was not preaching to us. He was preaching to about this kingdom. He wanted to start this kingdom. He, want, he was to become the Messiah for the Jews. But then these fellas did not accept him. They killed him. So the whole kingdom was postponed up to here. And then first until the fullness of the Gentiles. So are you seeing the difference? So did Jesus really baptize anyone? Did Jesus baptize anyone? People can ask that. Did he baptize anyone? John 4, 1 to 2 says... When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and uh, baptized more disciples than John, all right? Now we are seeing something here Jesus baptizing more people than John. Let's see. Did Jesus really baptize many people? Did he do that baptism? Because uh, there is a second verse here which says, verse 2, into brackets, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. So, many people can say, yes, we see Jesus was baptizing. But was it literally Jesus who took people and got them inside water? No. His disciples did. Because we see, verse 2, into brackets, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. So, it means... If already you have been told by John here that Jesus will come and baptize with the Holy Spirit. And why is Jesus not baptizing? Why are the, 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 the disciples, apostles, baptizing people? It must show that yet the, the time of him baptizing was not ready. All right. So the conclusion is Jesus did not get anyone in water but his disciples. So Jesus' baptism was different one. By the Holy Spirit, not by water. So he got no one inside water. So he was to baptize with the Holy Spirit. All right? So he was to baptize. Let, let me not write it there. He was to baptize with the Holy Spirit. But then it did not come around this time. This time he was still... Pre let me tell you. You see, the, the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews that... The testament, a testament is effected by the death of the testator, all right? Until a testator 
who is the testator? Jesus Christ. Until the, the testator literally dies, then you can't be able to effect the testament. And we see most of this book, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they are still here. Matthew, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And John. These are still books which before Jesus died. So literally these books are also part of the Old Testament. Okay? Because the testator had not died who effects the testament. Okay? So are you seeing the difference? Now let's see. There are so many people who go to the book of Mark. Mark 16, 16. And they read this verse and say, it says like this. And they say, you see, somebody has to be baptized in water. Now let's see this. Mark 16, 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. So look at that verse. It says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Believe and you are baptized. But then the other way out is saying, but he that believeth not shall be damned. It doesn't say believeth not and is not baptized. So there is a clear difference there showing us that there is something different a different agreement here that it shows that when you believe, it's as if you automatically getting baptized. All right? So let's keep on checking. Let's keep on checking and uh, we can be able to understand. So now, in the book of Acts, we see already Jesus has died, officially has died in these books. And then now we see Jesus after resurrection. And the first place that he talks about baptism is in the book of Acts 1.5. All right. And Jesus says this word, For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. So he's telling the apostles, John truly baptized you with water, but you'll be baptized by the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Okay, so when we see that, we already see Jesus is confirming that John baptized you with water. But then there's another baptism by the Holy Spirit which is coming very soon, so brace yourself. So already we see Jesus' ministry, he was preaching, but then the apostles were the ones who were baptizing with water. So Jesus never touched anyone with uh, water. And we see already this other time, Jesus is also telling them, hey, it's still coming. The Holy Spirit baptism has not yet arrived. So here it has not yet arrived. So let's see. That was Jesus. That was Jesus' ministry. Let's see also the time of the Peter's ministry. Peter. So this is uh, this guy here called Peter. All right. Now Peter, Peter's ministry. Let's see what exactly was Peter preaching about and what was Peter talking about. And uh, we see this one in Acts 2.32. Acts 2.32. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So Peter says, hey, repent and be baptized. Repent. So there are two things. He says, you have to repent. Repent. Uh -huh. Repent and be baptized. All right, so that one, it's already in, uh, he said that, that is Acts, Acts 2, 38, okay? So, Peter first says, repent and be baptized in Acts 2, 38. Let's continue, Let, 32, sorry, I'm sorry, 32, 32. Now, let's see, does Peter continue saying the same thing? Or is, this, is there something else that he sees or understands? Now, first of all, we have to understand, who was Peter telling this, repent and be baptized? We can get the context from verse 22. He's saying, ye men of Israel. Verse 22 is talking about ye men of Israel. Are you Israel? Mm, no. So this one is talking about Israel. Okay, Jews. So this time is uh, around here, the first, first part. We see he's talking to the Jews. We see also verse 29, men and brethren, men and brethren. He was a Jew, so his brethren are Jews. Verse 36, let all the house of Israel, okay, house of Israel is Jews. Verse 37, men and brethren, okay, still Jews. 
verse 39, the promise is unto you and your children who? Jews. Okay. So literally he's talking to Israel, Jews. Is that our message? Mm, no. Let's see also what happened in Acts 8.35. Acts 8.35. We see another guy called the Ethiopian eunuch. 8.35 to... 8.35... Acts 8 verses 35. Sorry, I, I was lost. Acts 8 verse 35 to 38. We see the Ethiopian eunuch. All right? Let's see. The Ethiopian eunuch was a Gentile. Fine, cool. He's not Jew. So he's a Gentile. What really happened? Is there something which can show us that, uh, you see, someone has to get inside water? Let, let, let's see this. Maybe it's there. Uh, 8.35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. All right. Verse 36. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? So this Ethiopian eunuch, who is a Gentile, says, Now I have to be baptized. There is water here. So we are seeing a Gentile here being baptized. All right. Look, verse 37. And this one is only found in King James Version. Uh, most of the NIV and this new Bible uh, translation, they don't have this verse. They actually removed it, I think, by purpose so that they can confuse people. And Philip said, if thou, believe, if thou believest with all thine heart, you mayest. So there's something here that Philip is saying. Hey, the European Yukonak has said, is, I see water here. The, what hinders me to be baptized? Philip says, if you believe with all thy heart, you mayest. That word mayest, it means, um, I'm not really sure about water, but what I know is that you have to believe. So, fine, it's like, yes, if uh, you really want to get into water, but you must believe, okay, that Jesus, and he said, and he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. All right, and he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went both into the water, and Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. So you see, the Ethiopian eunuch has been baptized, but Philip has, has said one word: "You mayest." He really is really sounding. He's not really sure about the water thing, but he's really sure about believing. So that's the first guy we have seen here, and also remember one thing. He was preaching to the Ethiopian eunuch, Jesus. So he's preaching, who is Jesus? The Messiah. He's not preaching the blood of Jesus Christ or the gospel. He's not preaching what Jesus did. He's preaching who Jesus is. All right? So we also see another difference there. So Philip was preaching who Jesus is, not what Jesus did. So you can be able to see there's the, there are some character traits of Jews. There's some character traits of trying to explain something the way Jews used to, all right? So now, as we continue, let's also see Acts 10.38. Acts 10.38, all right? Let's go there. We see now Peter still talking again. Acts 10, verse 38. Uh-huh. This one we will start from uh, 38 all the way we can go a little bit down there. So it's saying, Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with the power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. And we are witnesses of these things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hung on a tree. So he's preaching now, Jesus. He's preaching what Jesus did. So Peter has started preaching about what Jesus did, okay? Not who Jesus was, okay? He started talking about what Jesus literally did. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not openly. To all people, but unto witnesses chosen before God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. Mm -hmm. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Now, Peter's started talking about believing, all right? 
And uh, we have not heard him talking about water. We need to check very well. Why is he not talking about water? He has just discovered about believing. Mm -hmm. Be, whoever believes shall receive remissions of sins. All right. And uh, let's see verse 44. Verse 44. While Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. And they which heard the word. Now, you, can you see something here? Now, this is a story whereby Peter is talking to the, is preaching to Cornelius. And uh, when he's preaching to Cornelius, Cornelius was a Gentile. And uh, Peter expected that after I speak to them about Jesus Christ, what is going to happen next, I am going to make sure that now, after I preach to them, I am going to tell them now, you have to be baptized in water and all that. But as Peter was preaching, these guys received the Holy Spirit. Like, all of a sudden, he had not even gotten them into the water. And then, of course, we see later on, they got inside the water. All right? So, something has really happened there, which has made Peter a bit mixed up. Why is it that they have gotten the Holy Spirit and yet he, they have not been baptized yet, all right? But yet he baptized them later. But they got the Holy Spirit before the baptism. So something must have changed here. There must have been a transition here. And we continue saying these things. Eh? Let's continue and see, all right? Let's see uh, what happens in uh, Acts eleven fifteen. All the way to around 17. Mm -hmm. Peter is explaining to the guys. He went back now and he meets back the, the other apostles and then starts explaining to them. Hey, while I was preaching to Cornelius and his team, just immediately when they believed they got the Holy Spirit. I, I did not really understand because, you know, they were supposed to get inside water. Anyway, how? Anyhow, I still let them get inside water, but he's explaining Listen what he says in Acts 15, uh, 11, 15. He's explaining and saying, As I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them, as on us at the beginning. He's talking about the day of Pentecost, what happened. Then I remembered, I, the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. So he's saying, guys, <laughs> I was preaching to these people then, when they got the Holy Spirit, before even water, I remembered, I remembered what? That Jesus said, uh, John indeed baptized with water, but I, the other baptism of Holy Spirit is coming very, very soon. All right. Let's see verse 17. For as much then as God gave them the like gift as he did to us, who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what, I, what was I that I could withstand God? So he says, Already, yes, we knew baptism had to be done in water. But if God had already given them Holy Spirit before even they got inside water, who was I to say that I can withstand what God wants to do? All right. Then now we see later on Peter confirming the words of Jesus Christ about the transition from water to faith. Now he starts confirming hey, from the look of things here is like we are having a transition from water all right, to faith. So Peter says, mm, from the look of things, if these people now are getting the Holy Spirit, even before, even without water, then there must be a transition here. And then he confirms that, all right, in Acts, let's go there, in Acts 15, 17, uh, 15, 7, sorry, Acts 15, 7 to around 11, all right. And when there had been much disputing, so they have been together, Paul came through and then all the other apostles and, and they are there, they are trying to dispute on different things. Hey, why did you go to, to preach to the Gentiles? You know, we are told to go this. <laughs> he says, he says in around verse 7, and when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, men and brethren, you know, that a good while ago, God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth all right, should be should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did to us. So he gave them the Holy Ghost, even as he did to us. This was this guy has got the Holy Ghost without water. Remember the time of the Pentecost. All right. Listen, verse 9. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by 
faith. So now he's saying these people are not purified by something else. They are purified by faith. Okay. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we are able to bear? Because the time of the Jews, they had to do some things. You know, it was all about do this, do that. They had to get inside water, literally. But now he's saying, why should we put yoke on these people? While God already has given us liberty, all right? Verse 11, listen what he says. But we, now he's talking to the, he's talking to his kindred, his Jews, fellow Jews. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. So he's saying, us, who are already bound in this, we are bound in, we have to get baptized and then repent and be baptized. Now, I think we shall also be, be all about believing. And then once we believe like them, then we will get salvation. We don't need to get inside the water. All right. So let's also see another time that Peter also confirms. He confirms that now he's no longer about water. It's about, it's about faith. You don't need to get inside the water. Listen, 1 Peter 1.18. 1 Peter 1.18. And the Bible says, 1 Peter 1.18. For as much as we know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things. This is Peter saying. You are not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. So who are the fathers of is, uh, Peter? The fathers were Jews, all right? The time, they had to do this and this and this. Listen, verse 19. But with the precious blood of Christ, as the lamb without blemish and without spot. So now, we are no longer justified by doing these things, getting inside water. We are only justified by faith. Faith in the blood, the blood of Christ. So literally, is believing in what Jesus did. We don't have to get inside water so that now we can be saved. It's a very different thing. So nowhere does he talk about water anymore. We don't see Peter again speaking about water. Let's also see about Paul's ministry. Did Paul talk about water? Did Paul say anywhere about water? Is there any place? Let's check. And uh, we can start from around uh, Acts 13, 13 to 38. That's the, 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 the point where we can make it a start here. Because uh, Paul is saved around Acts 9. So after that time, he's, he's only seen very majorly from around Acts 13, 38. Now, let, let's hear what Paul says. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren... That is, he's saying to Jews, because Paul was also a Jew, all right? That through this man, Jesus, is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. Okay? So he's saying through which man? Through Jesus Christ, we have the forgiveness of sins, all right? Verse 39. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things, from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. So the first time we hear the word justified coming through, Justified. All right. Justified literally means just if I had not sinned. You see, it's like you're, you're forgiven as if you never even sinned. When God looks at you, it's just as if I had not sinned. So the first time we're seeing the word justify, justify comes through. So when you see that, you're like, whoo, okay. So the time of Moses, you can only be justified by doing something. Now, we only need faith. Mm -hmm. And let's see the other verse. Let's see another verse here. Uh, let's see another verse here where Paul also speaks. Uh, verse, uh, chapter 13, verse 46 to 47. Listen what Paul says. Then Paul and Barnabas worked, Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. To you Jews. But seeing you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turned to the Gentiles. So he says, you Jews, you are worthy to have heard the gospel first. But you are like, no, no, we are not worthy of everlasting life. So first we turned to the Gentiles. All right. Verse 47. So has the word commanded so has the lord commanded us saying i have set thee to be a light of the gentiles that you should be 
that thou shouldn't be for salvation and that thou shouldn't be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. So he's saying, God has commanded them, saying that they have been sent to be a light of the Gentiles, the Gentiles who shouldn't have been for salvation. Like, the Gentiles would not have gotten salvation, but because of the hardness of the hearts of the Jews, then salvation was first sent to the Jews, uh, to the Gentiles, all right? So, in, in short, Paul tells us that Jesus was the minister to the Jews, and Paul was to the Gentiles. He explains very well. So Paul here is explaining very well that, hey, after all this happened, we see already Jesus, his ministry was all about the Jews. His ministry was all about Jews, Jews, Jews. All right? So we have seen the ministry of Jesus was Jews. This one was also Jews. All right? We have also seen Peter was more to the Jews. But now we see Paul, when Paul shows up, he's not to the Jews, but he's to the Gentiles. And even makes this clear. He makes this clear in Romans 15, 8. Romans 15, 8, uh, Paul says, Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision. Who are circumcised? The Jews. For the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. So which promise was made unto the fathers of the Jews? That a Messiah will come who will rule them and bring up the, the, the kingdom here. So Jesus was all about confirming what the fathers had been told. But let's see, Romans 15, 16. Paul says that I, he's talking about I, Paul, should be the minister to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified, by the Holy Ghost. So already saying, hey, but me, I'm more on this side. I'm more on this side. All right? And there's also another place we see Paul being asked how someone uh, can be saved. And he says it's by faith only. Let's confirm that verse. Paul is asked, how, how, how is someone saved? How, how can someone be saved? All right? In Acts 16.30, Acts 16.30 to 31, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So Paul is being asked, what must I do to be saved? Remember Peter, he said, repent and be baptized to be saved this time. But now we see another thing here. Peter, uh, Paul is saying in verse 31, and they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. So he only says about believe. So believe, all right? So believe is exactly what uh, Paul has said, hey, believe and you shall be saved. So this one is uh, in Acts 16.31. Acts 16.31. So now we're seeing believe. And there's no other thing which is being spoken there. So it means mm, something has changed. There must have been a major, major transition. So we see Paul also saying that God did not send him to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Why is Paul so much against, no, nah, I'm not after baptism. I'm not after baptism. Baptism, no, 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 God will sort that one. He says actually in 1 Corinthians 1, 17 to 18. Let's see this. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Christ told me, go to the Gentiles. But then he told me, don't baptize, but preach the gospel. Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ be made of none effect. All right? For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto those who are saved, it is the power of God. So he's saying, you guys, God did not send me here. Jesus did not send me here to come and baptize people. No. Actually, he sent me just to preach and say, the gospel. So everything else now nah, is going to handle about the whole story of baptism. So that one brings us to a question. Then if Paul is not supposed to be baptizing and then we have seen the baptism here and it has been mentioned before. So what is the importance of baptism? Why, why are people baptized? Why is it that baptism is an integral part? Like why? Why is baptism even important? We know one thing. Through baptism, we get the Holy Spirit. So you can only get the Holy Spirit through being baptized. 
But you, you can remember very well in, uh, in, in this time, Acts 2.32, where Peter says, repent and be baptized and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So you repent, that is get saved, and then you will receive the Holy Spirit after you're baptized. So it shows that you can only get the Holy Spirit after you're baptized. But now let's see. Do you get the Holy Spirit now through water? Are you baptized to get the Holy Spirit? Is it that way? Is that how we get the Holy Spirit now? By water? In Ephesians 1.13, the Bible says, In whom you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also you believed, in whom also uh, you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So we see, right now, the Bible is telling us another thing. When you believe, all right, when you believe, you get saved, and then you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. So this is uh, like two in one. All right? You get, once you believe, you are saved and you get the Holy Spirit immediately. So it's like uh, it's one, one thing. Once, once you do this, God is going to sort the other thing. All right? So baptism, literally, the way we are seeing, it's by faith. And uh, once you believe then you get Holy Spirit. So it's, it, it's meaning that if you are to get Holy Spirit through baptism, then it means it's like your faith has also given you the baptism. So through baptism, we have also gotten the Holy Spirit. So, okay. Let's also see Colossians 2.12. The Bible says something. We are uh, buried with him in baptism. So you're buried with him in baptism. Who? Jesus. Wherein also you are risen with him through the faith. <laughs> faith, believing. Of the operation of God, who has raised him from the dead. So we are told that we are buried with him and we are raised with him. So literally, when you believe through the operation of faith, 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 okay? The operation of God, which is only activated by faith, you are buried with him. So buried in short means you get the Holy Spirit. Because once you're buried in water and you come out, now it means you're the Holy Spirit, all right? So in short, it means once you believe, you get the Holy Spirit instead of... Uh, and the baptism that you're done, it's by faith. Okay? Are you seeing the difference there? So all that is required is faith. And all other salvation operation, God will accomplish. So God just says, believe. So salvation, you don't have to do anything. So literally just saying, believe, and then everything else, God is going to handle. In Ephesians 4, 5, we are told, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. So you're baptized once. One baptism. We are all baptized once. Okay? So water baptism. And uh, one thing I like to tell you is that I don't think that water baptism can baptize all believers once together. Can you all of you, millions of believers together, be baptized in one place? Let's see. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. What does it say? For by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. By one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. So how can you all of you be baptized inside water at the same time? No, we are told that baptism is from the spirit, is a baptism of spirit, all right? So we are baptized and made to drink in one spirit. So this one seems to me that baptism now is no longer the way it used to be by water, but now it is by believing. Once you believe, you're saved and you get the Holy Spirit. So in short, you've been baptized. So everything has already happened for you, okay? All at once. So you are not saved by being baptized, but you're saved by believing. What do you believe? You believe in the gospel. The gospel, once you believe in the gospel, you are saved. And where do we find the gospel so that you can believe? The gospel, the gospel is found in 1 Corinthians. Let me write it here. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 1 through 4. This is the gospel, all right? 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Let's read it, and then we can be able to understand what the gospel is. 
Let's read it. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. This is the gospel. Once you believe this, then you are baptized immediately. And also you get saved. And also you become a child of God. And then all those things which come with uh, being saved. You become a new creature. You, you get uh, uh, the Holy Spirit is sealed inside you. All those other operations are done by God. You get even circumcised the way... Here we are told the Jews were circumcised, so we are circumcised by, by, by uh, with circumcision, not by hands. Okay, so let's see. What is the gospel? First Corinthians fifteen one through four. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which you are also saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I deliver unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. So once you believe that Christ died for my sins, he was buried, he rose again, According to the scriptures, then that's the gospel. Once you believe, that is what Jesus did for you. How? How he did it? How he died? How he did it? Once you believe that, then you're saved. So I, I'm not saying that you don't be baptized in water. You can, you, you can always do whatever you feel and uh, whatever the Spirit leads you. But what I'm seeing here is that baptism is now by believing. Once you believe, you get saved, and also you get the Holy Spirit. So if it's like this, then uh, being inside water, then uh, to me, seems obsolete or seems another different uh, gospel. So that is what should be done, and that's, that's what I believe, and that's not only me. Don't say it's because Keith said this. No. This is exactly what... Uh, the Bible is spoken about here, and I'm only following what the Bible is saying. So thank you very much. You can share the video to other people so that they can also be able to hear and understand. God bless you, and have a great time.